what up everybody i definitely just got done wasting six minutes of my life not recording this gdq submission so now we're coming back <laughs> twice as raw and in full effect uh, i am your main man dr fat body on the ones and twos joining me tonight uh two amazing runners a lot of history in the community both have done a lot for the, the uh, respective games that they get down in we have draco dan and just lemmers boys say hello how you doing what is up, everyone? And so basically I asked these nerds to come here because, you know, we all have a bunch of ton, giant brain knowledge about this game. Uh, the first thing worth note here I want everyone to pay attention to in this intro cutscene is how everyone drives. Uh, you know, everyone wanted to be uh, DK back then. They so, kind of got their driver's license out of a cereal box and yeah. the After Effects really shows. Yep. Look at that. There's there's no logic there. Everyone's cutting each other off, and then Homeboy just gets lost in the back because he has poor ability. I can't believe Sonic Adventure invented Grand Theft Auto. You know, I had mentioned this once before, and it was going to be really funny the first time, but I'm just going to mention it real shortly now. If this ever happens to us in the U.S. or anywhere in the world, please... Bring a plastic straw for you. California, this is why you don't illegalize plastic straws. So without a plastic straw, we can't drink chaos. There is no there is no chaos Capri Sun. No blue Kool-Aid. Nope. Look at my man. He just hops down. He's confused. He's like, hey, everybody. Anybody got the time? Shoot the blue guy. Maybe he just, nah, just shoot him. really bad, though. I mean, he could. I also, I never noticed that homeboy looks left and then looks right before just busting more guns. And then he's gone. Alright, so coming up we have our first boss. This boss is easy peasy. Uh, basically we're going to manipulate the AI and move around him uh, doing a series of inputs so that he always does the same thing. I botched it a little bit and I'll let uh, Sam go ahead and explain that for us real quick. So yeah, when you homing attack on the chaos, um, your movement of where you're going will basically manipulate where he's going to move, and as a result of that, you can actually make him recover faster from being in this like little swim animation. And if he had hit him in that second time and then standed directly in the puddle, he wouldn't have swam around at all. He would just immediately like ascend. Yep. And then at the end of that fight, you'll see we actually spin dash in uh, his puddle puddle form. Just to disrespect him, you know, it adds a little bit of BM there. What a guy. Sonic with the animation of somebody in a 90s club right now. We also should mention why he's not skipping any of the cutscenes. That is because in the Dreamcast version, you were not able to skip the cutscenes. There are only two cutscenes in this game where you are technically able to skip them. But that's because the flags are set when you watch the cutscene rather than the cutscene finishing. And that is when you unlock Tails and when you unlock Amy. Which is, in my opinion, one of the most unfortunate things about this run. Because if this didn't exist, in my, this would be the better version of the game. That's, that's how, at least how I look at it. I, do, I am a little bit biased because I started learning this first before learning DX. I think they're both amazing. They're both really, really fun to watch. DX is really cool just because of how much faster it is with the, the higher frame rate. But, you know, a big trade-off is we get way better textures. That's another thing that uh, Sam can explain a lot better than I can, is the oh, yeah. difference, some of the differences between DC and DX. Yeah, Dreamcast kind of, since it's the OG, it has the original textures, the original shaders, the original animations, original models, etc., etc. And all around, it just has a more visually appealing design to being like a nice late 90s, cartoony aesthetic rather than trying to be a somewhat more realistic like mid-2000s aesthetic as what DX was and just feels more native to like Sonic's like atmosphere yep and then so coming up in Emerald Coast uh, no big skips nothing too crazy just overall good movement that we want to use there is a skip that we can employ in the beginning of the stage that saves maybe a second or two if done first try um I'm not super consistent at it, so I don't like to go for it being that early on in the run. We have a ton of stuff that can save time throughout the rest of the run, and that tends to be my priority. 
the Emerald Coast is kind of, with a, for being the first stage, it, it's kind of just a big case of just trying to get queen, queen movement at the beginning rather than getting very large skips to go across most of the level. Yep, and one of the different things that we could have done a little bit differently here is actually a camera shift, but I've been finding recently that if I slow down even a little bit, that orca is coming for me. Now here, after watching this a few times, yeah, I, th I think I just didn't land on the platform. It was too far off to the right, it. yeah. That okay. movement, that getting that movement in this area can be pretty frustrating on the Dreamcast version. You can't really blame yourself though with certain missing certain skips on Dreamcast because the joystick itself does have a straight slight tilt on Dreamcast for some odd reason. Yep. And I tried to run this game on arcade stick to see how it would feel and no matter how oh, which arcade stick I tried, it just it wouldn't do anything with it. Not even on like my like, <laughs> my actual like PCB from a Dreamcast controller is it's nothing. And so then there, um, we missed a little bit of a, uh, a movement, just to save a tiny bit of time. Uh, basically, we got clipped back uh, in an invisible wall that we weren't trying to get clipped out into. That's at least how I understand it. Yeah, there's like a barrier between the perimeter of that little island, and if you go back in bounds, you'll not be able to clip back out unless you go like a, like a certain height. Now, as, as previously mentioned, uh, mentioned by Limerus, one thing that I would like to bring up here... Uh, is that the next scene that we have coming up is a scene that we can actually skip. Uh, it's being one of two in the run. Basically, as soon as Tails has materialized on screen, we are good to skip. Which I thought it was a little bit after that, so I had been doing it really slow for a while. You can actually just hold the <coughs> buttons to soft reset as the um, like stage is loading up. Like when, it's like when you see it just be full black, you can just hold it and it will automatically reset at the perfect frame. I actually didn't know that. Okay. I thought that if you did it too fast, it wouldn't count. Nah, it's actually... You can't press any... It doesn't load any inputs until the area itself is loading. So you can pretty much just hold the inputs and it'll automatically reset. Also, another thing worth to note is with some of these cutscenes, uh, I am going to be mentioning during the run that, you know, there's a lot of good spots for donations throughout this run. Um, and I, you know... I'm going to have some ideas by the time of GDQ as to what maybe some little donation ideas are. Like, what's your favorite topping on pizza? What's, you know, we'll get something cooking up in this here brain of mine. Also, it's worth noting that that movement is a little bit harder on Dreamcast just because of the way the camera control works. Still, it's, it's not too bad. And getting the Crystal Bangle early will actually allow us to uh, move faster overall with Sonic. Yeah, it has like a, I think, 4 or 5% extra speed um, acceleration, which is not really that easy to notice when you're playing casually, but in a speed run, you do eventually notice that he is actually moving rather a lot quicker, rather even though it's a small percentage. All right, and so coming up, we're basically just uh, m making our way to our next boss fight, and we have the Egg Hornet. Uh, as we've seen through multiple iterations of Sonic games throughout the year, Dr. Robotnik, or as I refer to him, Dr. Robert Nick, is up to just his dastardly deeds again. He is going to be trying to stop Sonic in any way, and of course, with his big genius brain, uh, large brain energy, he, uh, you know, has, has a ton of different vehicles to use, a d bunch of different, like, mobile weapons, just, you know, he's pulling out the stops against the blue man. He's fared hard for him in the past, so... This scene is actually pretty interesting when you watch on Dreamcast, or when you just watch it between English and Japanese, because while this is the first game where they refer to him as Eggman in the English version, in the English version, Eggman gets upset when you refer to him as that, but in the Japanese version, he says, that's right, I am Dr. Eggman. Which is a nice little, like, regional difference uh, thing that's, cha that's changed, and it's yeah. pretty like, neat the way they did that. I feel like they threw it in for the American fans, you know what I mean? Because, like... For a while, like no one wanted to accept the name change, even when it had happened in the original Archie comic. So I, I actually <laughs> appreciate that. Yep. All right, and so coming up, really, really simple boss fight. Uh, nothing too serious that we have to actually worry about. We're just going to be spin dashing close uh, to this fence here. 
I like to stand closer to Robotnik just so that he gets into his next section of movement faster. I don't know if it actually makes him move faster. It's just a I don't believe thing. it does actually have a difference. Because he starts moving after you fire all the missiles rather than in them landing. And then I know one also, thing that's a little bit different on DX is you can actually go for a faster third hit on this boss fight. I just don't know if it's uh, applicable on DC or not. It should be. But yeah, the what he did there was... He homing attacked the um, egg hornet like right as he drilled down. You're not really you're not really supposed to just spam like homing attack like that into him, but it does work there, and as a result, you can just immediately destroy him. Yeah, basically, we're not allowing Robotnik to uh, hop into any of uh, any sort of iframes, and we're just taking advantage of the fact that we can mash homing attack over and over again. Also, if uh, anyone would like to keep a counter on how many times Tails gets an emerald taken away from him, please do. Ah, ah, ah. And our Behold. water boy's back. Yep. You know, he's uh, Ro Robotnik's going to turn him into uh, how it looks like having a w one very lonely summer. You know what I'm saying? Look at that big arm. My man's been flexing for weeks. That's a lot of arm curls, you know what I mean? He's... Look how big those hands are. I bet you he gives good massages. I feel like one's better than the other, given it actually has bones. Do we ever get to see how Chaos 3 looks? Nope. Chaos 3 and 5 are, no, are never shown. But this is the one form of Chaos that you can see, but you never fight. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Little do we know, Big actually scrapped him down in an alleyway looking for Froggy. <laughs> guys, guys and gals, if you don't have a friend in your life like Big, you need one. My man went through hell and high water trying to save a frog. Literally did everything that he could for his little companion. Faced adversity, faced certain death. All he wanted was Froggy. If my, if, if my girl don't put herself out there like that, something bad happened to me, dog. You know what I'm saying? I need, I need me a big the cat. And then here, uh, one thing worth noting is like you don't really want to jump during this section because Sonic's uh, uh, speed on the ground is faster, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. He's faster when holding an item. as is when he has his most like, neutral like, acceleration from just standing. Or from just a standard movement rather than having to spin dash. Alright, so Windy Valley, slowly becoming one of my favorite stages in the game, uh, has rem remix music from 3D Blast, also that opening was so fast, uh, has remix music from 3D Blast, uh, and just has some of the coolest overall movement, it's also one of the stages uh, that going from the beta to the actual finished game changed dramatically. Oh yeah. Um, there was just a ton of stuff through overall level design, um, textures, enemies... And, yeah, it's, you know, all three acts feel very rewarding to do. Uh, especially, you know, like, one thing with this game is when you first start off, the, the camera is a real big bug. But the more you start to master it, the, the better you feel about doing the run. As silly as that sounds. It's just, it's one more thing empowering you to go run after run after run, in my opinion. Also, one thing he had done in the tornado was he spin dashed onto the jump panel, and, and originally you're supposed to jump on all the jump panels and then use a um, trampoline to ascend onto the bridge. But instead, he when he spin dashed into the jump panel, it had him still in ball form when he like um, the time ran out, and he was able to homing attack, and it ended up ascending him into the spring. Yeah, and so there was also one thing that we skipped doing that I just recently learned how to do. There is a gravity skip here, and I'm actually going to let Draco Dan explain a bit of how the uh, skewed gravity works in SA2B, because uh, the trick that we could do here that's opposite of the one that I'm currently doing is actually very similar. Uh, Draco, take it away. Yeah, the mechanics are like essentially the same. The gravity in the adventure engine is very dynamic since you're meant to be able to use slope jumps and all that so essentially whenever sonic is on a slope it temporarily reassigns the direction of gravity and then it only resets once you fall below a certain speed in essence so once you manage to skew gravity 
as long as you're able to maintain that speed, you can actually keep gravity in a specific direction. And there's, at the start of Windy Valley Act 3, a very specific way that you can just fall straight to the end of the stage like that, but it's very particular and it requires you to do a lot of kill plane dodging, which there's only some very vague visual cues to go off. I believe and yeah, the reason... What? Continue, Sorry. you're good. Okay, I was going to say, but the reason he, was, he isn't really able to do it in the Dreamcast version is because it requires a camera mode known as free cam, which kind of lets you freely move your camera around. And using it, trying to do that skip with auto cam, which is what the Dreamcast version is defaulted to and you can't switch out of it, it kind of messes with your movement a bit and you're not properly able to consistently position yourself to get through the um, skip with the, state, with the skewed gravity. Yep. So currently in runs, generally I'll go for it like maybe one time. But it really just depends on the pace that I'm at go, uh, going into it. It really only saves like 20 to 25 seconds to my knowledge. So it's not not gigantic like some of the other skips that we'll see in the run. But it's still really cool to do. Just as uh, Lemmers had, had pointed out, it is a lot more of a gamble. Um, there's also an effect that the camera goes through where it, it kind of sucks back in where it doesn't do that. And that's because of being in the auto cam. neat little difference here between Dreamcast and DX is that placement of the lights be used is farther into the tunnel than what it is on DX, where the second you turn in, you will see the lights be used. Which is a pretty odd change they did, in my opinion. But, you know, they do them. And this is the big reason that I wanted uh, Lemuris to be here, is if you're talking about a walking, talking encyclopedia of all things SA1, this is the person you go to. Huh, well, I just learned something there. At the end of that cutscene, it keeps your camera in that position, in the Japanese version. It doesn't do that in the other versions. Uh, so this is actually the U.S. version going into options it's and turning the uh, uh, turning the uh, audio and text into Japanese. Like with huh. the settings. Yep. Well, that's interesting how I've never seen that done. And interesting that his mouth movement in the Tails cutscene like, had like a Japanese form of it. That's interesting, the way that works. Hmm. AKA, you're gonna have to look at my Dreamcast disc at GDQ. <laughs> and then here uh, is our first example of what's known as a hover. Uh, essentially, with a hover, what we're doing is we're doing a jump, and then as fast as we can within that jump, hitting X to cancel our air momentum, and then holding onto the jump button. Uh, that essentially stores, uh, uh, stores the jump so that when we do a spin dash, uh, we get a crazy amount of not only height, but length as well. And here also, see... here's a nice little Dreamcast exclusive version of the stage skip. In DX, you typically take the bottom route to just jump onto some rings or some coins that will like ascend you onto the top of the platform. But on this version, the ceiling um, doesn't have any collision, so it's a lot more consistent to take the top route on Dreamcast. And also another reason we don't take the bottom route is because it's another skip that would require free camera to have more consistency. Yep. And the clip is just all around more inconsistent on Dreamcast for some reason. And so then here, shout out to Dage4. In this upcoming session, is the worst movement in the game. Just feels bad carrying the ice piece. Also, this will make two, two, two emeralds. Ah, watch, ah, ah. watch out for that purple stuff, folks. Apparently, ah, it puts you on your beat. Alright. Yeah. You know, this part definitely can be very challenging. It's very easy for the collision in this game to just get you stuck to absolutely anything and everything that you come into contact with and just completely kill your momentum. Yeah, yep. one wall rub, and you pretty much go from like going 20 miles an hour to a flat zero. <laughs> And then, yeah, here at the, you know, before it transitioned, that would have been another good spot for a cutscene, uh, or a donation, obviously. Which is another reason that I really like this version of the run, is what there's, you know, when it's going on, there's a ton of informativeness, and when it's not, there's memes to be had, there's information to be given about version differences, and there's places for donations. I feel like, in, for the sake of having really nice memes, you should probably play the English version when at the run, because... That'll definitely spice things up. 
Oh no, definitely. Uh, everyone wants to hear their knuckles. Oh no's. And that could be a fun incentive to do as well, uh, to have you know the possibility of like Japanese versus English or. You know, I I actually yep. no, that's an incentive. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. If if the run gets in, that'll be an incentive. And then here, one thing worth note is uh, we want our key throw to be close to the hole, because getting in is always the most important part. Uh, unfortunately, our throw was pretty bad there, so we lost about maybe a second, second and a half, nothing too big. But it's tiny little optimizations like that that will, you know, give you better times, PBs. Uh, people think it's just the crazy tricks in this room that are important. I will tell you after running this for about a good six months now, it is definitely, all, all of your tiny optimizations are important. Please practice them every day if you are getting into this or any other 3D game for that matter. That is one thing transitioning from 2D to 3D that I find to be just a lot different. But speaking of huge skips, we have Ice Cap, which has three acts, all of which have a significant portion of each act cut out. And there you'll oh, yeah. see, I, t I had talked about uh, sometimes cancelling your momentum being a bad thing. Uh, I actually hovered over the X button on the first attempt and messed it up. And then on the second one, just the camera didn't want to cooperate with me. I do it in a way so that the camera kind of drifts behind Sonic uh, to get a little bit more control of him, but it's nothing horrible. Also, that's, that's this possible. is a, yeah, this is a clip that, while is also possible on DX, is the only consistent way to clip out here on Dreamcast, because the one we take on DX is, like, pretty much right next to where you'd enter the snowboard section, and you can literally just walk through the wall, but on Dreamcast, we climb spin dash this wall. It's a lot, it's not as consistent to get through, but it is the only method, and you skip about, like, a minute and 30, 40 seconds. Than um, snowboarding, which upsets, upsets me because you're skipping my favorite song in the game. The snowboarding is ridiculously long, though, and although you are just falling towards the end of the stage like this, there is a specific route that you need to take to avoid kill planes on the way down, and if you do contact a kill plane, the game just respawns you in the snowboarding section, so it's a big forced time loss. Yeah. So it's very important to know where you're going. You'll actually see... Uh... Earlier in the trick, that's the exact reason why I do a slight little pause buffer there. Just to make sure that I have it lined up so I'm within those kill planes properly. I also, and I'll probably do this on stage and embarrass myself like a fool, but I, uh, I have a weird counting way where I count to five, but, like, it's not actual people seconds at all. <laughs> it is just one my is brain it? seconds. It's, it, no, it's not even that. It's, like, one, two, three... Four. <laughs> it's really, it's really bad. But it's you just. See, like, I just use the in game's timer just to see for me. That's a good one to use too, for sure. Also, best cutscene. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Facial you, expressions galore. You know, this is another thing that I'll generally rant about during this run. Is like, <clears> bro, <throat> we had a whole game. Something bucking you. We had a whole two games to go through this, right? You tried to fight me over a, a big fat man that promised you, you know, all the all these wonderful things and said I'm the bad guy. Now I'm back in town. I done lost money on Dreamcast stock, and you want to knuckle up again? What's gonna? You were useless last time. You are useless again. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. A little late there. <laughs> And look at this. This time, it's Knuckles' fault. Like, why Why is Sonic still homies with either of them? Well, technically, they're rivals even in this game. Well, that's fair. They, I guess Sonic and Knuckles always did have more of a rival rivalry than an outright friendship. That's cool. Also, one important thing to note here, uh, with the title of this game being uh, Sonic Adventure, this is Sonic's first adventure. Shoutouts to Xanto for that really stupid meme. <laughs> make it stop. Poor Knuckles realizes that he's been duped. What a guy. Again. He's a bit gullible. Not stupid, but gullible. You think he would have learned after he signed that contract for a 32X game, but no. <laughs> <laughs> 
shout outs to Worcester for being the, the only human insane enough to sp uh, spend time speedrunning that game, by the way. I know someone who spent time doing it, they just don't have the time on the leaderboards. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. They were the spot one. <laughs> <laughs> also, I love that his crotch gains eyes here. It's just the emeralds, but God, is that... It's an image you can't get out of your head as a child. Great, I wish I could get this me. boss fight out of my head. This boss fight is something else. Oh um, yeah, this boss me. is just bad. Yeah, so there's something that can happen during this uh, boss fight called getting blue balled. Uh, similar to real life, uh, blue balling is fake. Uh, there is no RNG in this fight. If you do everything the same, no, I'm just kidding. Mm, <laughs> some statistics to say otherwise. No, no, no I know. I just want uh, shout outs to the whole DX community. I'm just being there. A you go. That's what it looks like. Uh, and as you see during this run, I get blue balled for talking about it. Yeah. The, 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 but basically, you have to like this. AI, this boss does have AI manipulation, but it's inconsistent AI manipulation. But it's not f completely RNG. It's just yeah, it's it's dumb. To put it to put it simply, TLDR. This is a. It's not really that fun. It's not a horrible boss fight, all things considered. It's a it's a bit of a time waster, which is what a lot of the it's boss fights. The worst boss in the game. <laughs> Yeah. Good thing you only have to fight it as Sonic. <laughs> uh, I wish that was true. I was like, doesn't Tails also fight him? Both Tails and Knuckles. Yep. Woof. The manipulation is quite a bit easier with both Tails and Knuckles, though, since you can stay airborne for, like, forever. <laughs> you could still get it as Knuckles, though, <laughs> which is dumb. Yeah, well, it's not, like we say, this fight's far from perfect. And unfortunately, like, every time you get the blue ball animation, it wastes, like, eight seconds. Yeah, roughly eight seconds. I actually, I wonder if it's even longer on Dreamcast, it's... just a little lower frame rate. Technically it is, because it actually dips the frame rate when you get it. <laughs> I have no idea why, but <laughs> for some reason, getting that attack on Dreamcast does actually dip the frame rate a bit and slows the game down. Who is it that their Dreamcast copy is like? <laughs> oh, Master Ooh. Kirby? Yeah, Master Kirby. Shout out to that guy, man. If you've never seen his ILs for this game, it is some of the funniest speedrunning I have ever watched. If you ever watched a game corruption video, imagine that, except you're not trying to corrupt the game. The game's just doing it itself. You're just trying to speedrun it. That's the best part. And so coming up, uh, we have our probably biggest section for donations during the run. I guess one of two... Uh, Sky Chase has been infamous throughout some of the Sonic games. Shout out to Timps for dying in Sonic 2. Get good, old man. Uh, but this one, you know, fairly easy peasy. We've seen in the past on the GameCube version where we had the bet on what side the controller was going to go to. Uh, you know, they also got up and made a sandwich at one point. That was nice. Yep, we have seen that. There's There's been a couple different things. Did, what did you do during your run, Sam? I fell asleep and took a selfie with Draco. That I is... wanted to make a tweet during it, but I forgot to do that. <laughs> that was not a bad idea. Yeah, he quote-unquote fell asleep. It totally wasn't scripted or anything. Nah, no, I actually fell asleep. After Chaos 4, I couldn't take it. Of course. Knuckles was like, alright bro, you cool. You can hang around this hood now. Different neighborhoods, man. Red versus blue. A story we've seen time and time again Featuring thanks to yellow. Machinima. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, technically orange. Interesting little thing also between <laughs> Japanese and English again. In that last voice clip, Sonic says, let's get going. But in the English version, Tails says, let's get going. I don't know why they changed that, but they did. For once, Tails tried to be the dominant one in the relationship. You can't be a bottom your whole life. Oh my goodness. Probably gonna have to work some magic on that last part, but I forgot. <laughs> <coughs> and so then, yeah, coming up, um, one thing that always bugs me, why, watch this texture just turn bad. The, the has you, you ever seen Mario 64 and Mario has the low poly version of himself? It's pretty much that, but with textures.
We have a $50 donation from Buster Man. It reads, I miss my NASCAR bed. Love you, Dr. Fatbody. <laughs> Let's see. What? So this is the part where I, like, I really need to work on and theorize like what I want to do. Uh, one fun idea that I have during this that if you're, I guess if you're watching the submission video you're going to know of is uh, I actually want to try to get a hand cam with a Game Boy version of Pokemon Yellow and run the save <laughs> corruption route and beat it in under a minute during this just to flex. Um, some other ideas I've thought of since everyone just sits still during this part is maybe going for like a high score run where people can uh, donate and guess what my score is going to end up at. Uh, maybe, like, give them a t-shirt or something from my personal <laughs> collection that I've worn, if they guess right, so people will want to donate. You uh, just gave me an idea, actually. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I might I might use that idea for stuff. <laughs> Good. That's It's not a poor idea. It's not a bad idea. Because I always made an idea of guessing the door RNG and final egg for Amy, cause, but there's only one through five. You can't exactly make a very good, like, reward out of that. <laughs> For sure. But yeah, I might take that score idea. <laughs> hey, you heard it here first. Uh, Dr. Fatbody is a visionary. <laughs> <laughs> I am a doctor, after all. I have a PhD. I'm not going to get into what that PhD is in, but I do have one. Something about just staying in the corner for this, for this entire section is just really funny to me on paper. <laughs> So, fun fact yeah. about this section, uh, actually. So, a lot of people, I, I believe it's like top right or bottom right that they go into. Uh, I actually do top left because we'll take a little bit of physical damage throughout this section. And it actually leaves our percent counter at 2%. And I do that as a mental flex to keep me in the run to just state that like I'm 2% better than everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is not a joke. There's a literal reason why I position myself here. I've had people ask me a lot, and I always just ignore the question. But I figured it'd be a fun place to talk about that. Where did Tails get his pilot's license? I don't know. He was six when he learned how to fly a plane, so, you know. Like, something only really makes sense in Mobius. Oh, it's a nice yeah. Sonic Jam model. It's not Sonic R because his shoe, his shoe buck was in the right place. Sega, when when are we going to get uh, Uncle Chuck as a playable character in a Sonic game? Whenever we get Chuck from Sonic X as well. <laughs> Wait, Chuck was in Sonic X? No, he was just a grandpa. <laughs> he was a demon. He was a human. Aww. <laughs> oh, it hurts. <laughs> Shout out to the runs that you did where it was Sonic X and then in the bottom left corner you had the actual game. No, shout out to when I did Sonic X for Leapster. Oh, yep, I do remember that. And that Sonic X video where I was like watching it just got so DMCA'd. <laughs> Not really though, but it did, the VOD did get muted. <laughs> Is this the cutscene where his eye rolls through his head? Yep. After he after he shakes his head, you see it like become a slot machine. You don't actually want to see what his head looks like in this animation. His head isn't actually attached to his body when he's underground. It's like three feet under. Up oh, there it is. There goes slot machine eyeball. I love one big thing I love about this game is that like. From the cutscenes into actually playing the game, like everything's it's just loading on it like by itself. There's no like how do I put it? Like certain games go into like an interactable mode or something like that when they go into cutscenes. Like this is just literal game. Like there's no nothing different in the cutscene assets really between the actual gameplay. Oh yeah. And that's why when you skip cutscenes on the DX version, it kinda has like a hacky version of doing it. Which is why whenever you skip cutscenes on them the camera's in a weird position. Because it's kind of just loading animations that you that are locked with voice clips playing. That's kind of all it's doing in game. Out of curiosity, who was the first person to really do runs of Sonic Adventure One? Technically, it was uh, what's his name? 
I can find out. Taking it to the lab, folks. Draco Dan, how you feeling? How you enjoying this run so far? It's pretty special, yeah. It was actually Superfly, who also did runs on GameCube. He actually made me want to start running Dreamcast a little more to get a better time, because he actually took my record at one point, and then I kind of took it about like five minutes. <laughs> Man, the GameCube port. People haven't used that in a real long time, if I'm not mistaken, right? All I do is run it as a meme, because I want to get more time to random leaderboards on SRC. <laughs> That's fair. Also, Amy is saying that cute couples get in free. How much is Amy having to pay them? A lot. I, yeah. like, how, I like how her source of reasoning is like, okay, we're being chased by a bad guy. Nah, you owe me a date. Sonic's like, whatever. I wasn't doing nothing anyway. He's like, girl, I'm broke. I spent all my money on Dreamcast sock, but it's free, baby. <laughs> Coming up, this is one of my favorite skips in the run. Uh, I think this is absolutely sick. There's a couple different ways to do it, too, depending on where your ring count is. Basically, if I'm 15 rings or under, I go for one way. And if I get anywhere above that, I just start grabbing as many rings as possible and do it uh, the backup way. Which, uh, Sam, would you like to explain, like, how the opposite way of this works? Oh, you mean, like, uh... Like, the, like when, you, when you clip a little bit further, because I know in your PB you get, you basically get past that entire tunnel. Oh, yeah. Basically, um, well, when it comes to the skip, on DX, there's, like, a kill point there. But on Dreamcast, they forgot to put a kill plane in that area. So when you you can basically take two different paths because every ten rings, your acceleration increases on the cart. And if you have a low amount, you go you want to go in the center because you have less distance you're going to be going. But if you have more rings, meaning more distance, you can take the right path and get a farther path and skip a few more seconds. You don't want to aim in the middle, though, where the tunnel is, because that tunnel does have collision in certain parts of the geometry. And as a result of that, you can just either you either clip through like normal, or you can just die, and you don't want to gamble that. Yeah, and I learned that the other day. There is also a skip he could have done with the, co with the uh, roller coaster, but... The timing is a lot easier on, like, the PC version of DX of this game because there's, like, no loading gap in between. You have to, like, homing attack right when Act 2 loads in, and it's kind of hard to time properly on Dreamcast. Also you here. also need to actually jump down into the next act so that you transition into it in ball form so that you have a homing attack to use. That, too. Yeah. One, one yeah, thing, this is pretty much the backup strat. One thing that I get confused about at this section is, like, why I just sometimes get invisible walled. And I just, I can't get up there. There's a cap. There's like, there's like a barrier. Like, if you don't jump at the right time, the game kind of, like, locks your movement from getting any higher. Yeah, so I did it a little bit differently here. Just I just wanted to be done with the stage. All in all, uh, Act 1 was great, and Act 2 is whatever. It could have been a lot faster. Got hung up there, lost about 20, 30 seconds-ish. To refrain from having to constantly get stuck from the wall, you just want to have a spin dash not lash as long being like a quarter second long spin dash oh that, okay maybe half yeah. second around that time can you hover instead no okay because you need to you need to not be touching the wall basically oh okay yeah that makes sense and then here uh, one little movement thing that i feel like is worth noting that i do is uh i actually do neutral spin dash here which is why you'll see that, like, I'm not moving forward afterwards or carrying any momentum, really. Um, generally, if you charge them for long enough, two will be just fine. You can also start transitioning before you've been, uh, the game considers you as done loading into the section. Which I find kind of cool. Uh, on DX, there is a different way that you can go about clipping in. Ooh, that, that camera looked kind of weird there. There is actually a clip you could do in the, uh, in going for that ID area, but... It's kind of dumb. You kind of just go in the little grassy area right in the left of the uh, entrance. <laughs> oh, okay. Good to know. I'll probably start going for that. It's not an easy clip. It's actually very inconsistent. <laughs> Here is like, one... It's a very specific set of the collision to go into, and it's not fun. <laughs> it only saves like a quarter second if you actually get it. Because and... you do have to open the door for the hotel doors to for the hotel door to open. Okay. 
And then that previous section, there was one little tiny mess up uh, in the beginning of Act 1. It just landed a little bit lower than what we normally would. Doesn't lose a ton of time. Not really that big of a deal. But he also did show did an, another um, pretty major skip where he used another, I think you hovered? Yep. Um, across the building to skip what can be like almost a minute plus of uh, the stage. So here's a big oh, swag I see strat. For this. I, lo I love to do this. I just think it looks cool. Something that happened here, though, that I find very interesting is I've never gotten Sonic, Sonic into his full speed running animation from that happening. Generally, hmm. we, we lose time because Sonic just is stuck on the wall and then begins to run. And so it's something I actually want to look into because all in all, the stage went about as fast as what I, I normally do it. So. so I like this method of being stuck in that area. That actually is pretty useful to not get hit by the uh, caution barriers. Yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. And I like the way that it looks. Here we, we missed a spin dash jump. Well, sometimes, I don't... Do your inputs get 8, eight on Dreamcast? Yes. The, okay. the console does have slight latency. Okay, I had wondered about that. Because there are tiny little sections where I need a pretty quick spin dash jump where I feel like it's just not coming out. Yeah, like, even if you were to play on a CRT, the controller does still have latency regardless, so... And so, we're coming up on, like, basically, like, the last couple of stages of the game. You'll see I split twice there by accident, so I will realize that at some point, because I'm like, wow, I am not 12 minutes ahead. That would be a ridiculous pace. There's also a clip that I've seen, like, in some of those sections where you... You what, like go, go on, into on the, the station early? Yeah. That is not... That is technically possible on Dreamcast, but under the station, there's no flooring. Where, like, on Dream, where in DX there is, so you can walk on, into the trigger. But on, yeah, on Dreamcast, you pretty much just die. Because the collision behind the station is rather different going from DX to Dreamcast. For sure. Coming up is probably like my least favorite section of the run. Uh, I am not a fan of Sky Deck, as seen by my splits. Uh, and the second Sky Chase, like, it's okay. I've started just trying to kill everything and make it fun, trying to beat uh, G Pro's high score, which I haven't even gotten close to. Yeah, his high score was ridiculously high. Yeah, it's it is, 48,000. It yeah, it's very, very up there. Even I still struggle to get that close to it. <laughs> it's fun, though. Definitely makes for a good stage. Also, man, I got well, I'm coming back and watching this run. I need to work on some of these colors with these capture cards. This won't be an issue soon enough, though. Um, shout out to the people that are currently doing the Dreamcast HDMI mod. That is something that I am highly looking into. Well, I have an HDMI adapter for my Dreamcast. Do you? Yeah. That's cool. Is it like one of like the old like Kuro boxes or something? Or like the Akira? Uh, or... It's kind of like what the Wii U HDMI one is, if you know that one. It's kind of, you kind of just, it's the it's specific own uh, HDMI cord that you can plug into the Dreamcast, and it has an automatic adapter to the HDMI in the back end. I thought I grabbed one of those from my work to try out, but I, I definitely don't. No, that's right. It was a VGA cable. Never mind. Yeah, VGA is different. I think it registers it as VGA, which is how it is able to convert it properly. But yeah, the color on it is, and the picture is really clean. It looks like almost like emulator. <laughs> yeah. Also, now we need to get the ancient light, which is basically Sonic finding the light, and. He needs it in order to destroy the Kiki here to load a mountain. Because what's interesting about this is you can technically go over the wall to where the stage would be, but the stage trigger isn't there until you destroy the Kiki. And so in this run, Red Mountain is where I lose the most time. Uh, 
we're going to have like four deaths coming up on a certain section, and then uh, I'll let Sam take it away and actually talk about a little bit, just, you know, more of the camera differences and stuff and what is actually going on in the section, because he can explain it better than I can. Yeah, because like I've said it previously, when it comes to this game, free camera was like a godsend when it came to DX, because for using auto camera in this, for this, auto camera is basically trying to automatically, you know, as it says, move the camera in certain angles for like certain perspectives. And you'll definitely see like an example in this area, for instance, see how the camera just changes in that, tr that area. It's basically doing that in certain areas. And when you have free camera, it doesn't do that. It just has it in one set location. So you can use it to your advantage to try to get the areas better. But if you have an auto camera, you get in certain um, areas and as a result it changes it and your joystick is going the wrong direction and you'll immediately turn somewhere and you'll die. This bums me out going back and watching this too because like that should have been fine. Yeah that's unfortunate. <laughs> that one should have been like the, like the ones coming after this I started to get a little bit nervous because I was like no please like I don't want the run to die here like it's been a pretty alright run this whole time. Red Mountain is brutal, both on DX and Dreamcast. Yeah. It, like, visually doesn't look that hard either. There's, just, there's so many tiny little optimizations that you have to do. And so you'll see I spin my camera in a pretty specific way, but then I, I kept going too far out. Uh, I like to stick as close to the wall as possible to actually avoid that. That's what if I If you found. find yourself that you end up accidentally hovering when you meant to spin dash, rather than trying to just keep moving yourself forward, I would just, like, spin dash, or just a homing attack, and you'll probably still make it. Yeah, for sure. That is definitely something to note for the future. Also, that. he's taking a top route here, rather than being in the middle section, because, like I had mentioned with the camera, if you were to take the middle route, it would automatically change your camera into different air, in a different perspective immediately, rather than... Um, going uh, going over it, but when you take the top route, you never actually have that issue until like you get right to where you need to be. Yeah, and I had tried the movement from PC. It, I was like, nope, I'm good. Let's see. Yep, one more time, and then again, I shouldn't have moved forward. Yeah, that's actually good to know if that happens. That just don't. Yeah. Also, what I like to do is I like to hold spin dash, then let go. I like to hold spin dash for like half a second, then let go, then start holding forward. And then I start positioning myself a little better. That's cool. Yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah, this is the attempt that I get it. Because one small miscellaneous tech with this game is that holding forward when spin dashing does actually give you more distance. But sometimes you don't want as much speed as it's giving you. And that area is a good example of wanting to like keep your speed at a minimum level to where you can still make the skip. Also, in this section, he's like spin dashing onto this um, what's it called? I guess disc, where you can skip having to go around the perimeter of this room about like three or four times for the lava to ascend. But you can just you know skip all that just by taking this and landing on a future on a further area in the stage. And trying to maneuver, once again, a bad area with the auto camera. Yeah, trying not to die by the fire enemies. Uh, let's just say I take a very deep breath afterwards. Sometimes when I get onto that area and I know things are getting dumb on that on that sec on the platform, I just like use the D-pad to uh, fix my camera immediately, because that is a thing you can do at times. If it just gets stuck on something, you can just use the D-pad. Also, you'll see I started going slow there. I straight got shook when I got my rings took. I was like, nah, I am not dying. Nope, I'm good. Like, I don't want to yeah, die. There's nothing, there's nothing more anxious when you're doing a 130 emblem run, and you have the, 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 ring, the ring count needed, but once you get to that area, there you it's very easy to just get hit by the fire. <laughs> and, you, and you lose all your rings and your time. Also, Tails, because, you know, why not? Reasons. He's like, hey, buddy, I'm back. You want to fly? Thought yeah. you've seen the last of me. One thing to note is that uh, Draco's a doo-doo head. I am? Um... C. Damn, I call out posts. Noted. 
It's officially in the history books forever. Oh, that's me told. Get bodied, nerd. So I guess in this section, one thing, just for the run commentary, what are some of your guys' favorite runs from past GDQs? Uh, I actually need to think about this, but I know Draco probably has more, like, more in his head than I do <laughs> right now. I like CGN's F-Zero GX run, which I should have been on couch for, but wasn't. Oh, well. Oof. Oof. So I, actually I was actually. I agree that he did. I was actually going to be on couch for a Zaxxon's spinball run, but I didn't know if I was like actually because they didn't have any more chairs. After I was just standing there, I was like, "Am I going to be here?" No, <laughs> I just got confused. I just went on the couch, Aww. or I went in the back couch. <laughs> that was funny. I'm be assertive, dude. I will say, look, using your outside voice is tough when you're inside because it's not. It's breaking the rules. Yep. I will say, the one of my personal favorite runs from any GDQ event is, uh, it was the AGDQ that I was in, uh, it was the Mega Man X, uh, race between, uh, there were three different teams, it was basically like a team of OGs that had been talking mad trash, like, oh, there's no way we could lose, blah, 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 you know, it was like Walrus, you had, uh, oh god, what's Tokyo, and I want to say Domelix was like the three, I, I, I want to say that was the lineup for one of the teams. And then you had you had Sopa or Sopa, and two of the homies. I can't remember who the other two homies were, but I want to say like they were like the European dudes all on one team, kind of like the New Blood too. And man, like I remember partying with Sopa, and we're we're just sitting there, we're chatting with each other, and it's like, man, I'm gonna get destroyed. And me and the homies just started hyping him up. We're like, dude, like you are gonna destroy everybody. Like you're gonna be fine. Like like you know. Don't don't go at this like already with a losing attitude. You have this, and uh, I want to say that he had to do X one, which uh, you know doesn't have all the neons and stuff, but it's just been optimized so low over and over again. But going against some of the top players in that game can just be intimidating. And so uh, coming walking into the venue and looking up and seeing Sopa taking the lead and destroying everyone after we had given him like this like you know Rocky Four motivational speech. That is, this is probably my favorite GDQ moment. Another one I liked was from, uh, uh, what was it, SGDQ 2018 for Michael's last, like, Sonic 3 run for his retirement. Mm -hmm. that, oh, don't, that hit me. <laughs> yeah, I think that, I think that gave all the Sonic runners a little, a little bit of the feels for sure. Michael, you great people. It's hard to think that I've been speedrunning for 11 years now. My goodness. I got a I had a notification on Facebook yesterday that was a it was a screen cap from a laggy LCD TV playing the Xbox 360 version of Sonic 1 <laughs> where I had I got an 11 on Marble Garden and I was like, "Whoa, it's been it's been like 6 years." Also, I should probably to mention, but at the end of that uh, area in Sky Chase, that is actually final an area where you actually need to do inputs because that area is like a mini boss and you have to destroy the cannon in the center. Ideally, you want to destroy the cannon right when the doors are about to close so you don't have to wait for them to close after uh, defeating the boss. But it's it's not too, nothing too important. Also, I like that like lag spike it had when you were shooting it because it happens on Dreamcast. <laughs> I'm curious. I want to see something real quick in this section. So coming up, it's probably my least favorite stage in uh, the game. I was looking at something real quick because on the GameCube version of this game, the Chaos Emerald in the tornado was was white there, but in this section, it's yellow and green. It's yellow and red, but on the Dreamcast version, it's fixed. But I guess in the GameCube version, they forgot to add a texture on the emerald. <laughs> And the going in the first cutscene, which I always thought was really funny. That is pretty amazing. Also, I liked Sonic's "There we go." Yeah, the the random bits of English through this run always gets my chat laughing pretty hard. I just love Junichi because he is actually an English teacher in Japan. Oh, really? Yeah, 
That's why he's like. That's why he has his like English things, like English stuff. The thing when it comes to that is, in Japan, English is known as a cool or hip language, and Sonic is known to be cool or hip, and so it fits his personality perfectly, which is why he tends to always have that those English bits. I also love that uh, Sonic. Uh, that also that stare to Tails right there is just. And then Tails' response. Super hard. I gotta hit you like that, man. Still, I love com like looking at this game and comparing it to a lot of the PS2 games that came after it. And like, yeah, there's a lot of jank, but there's also a lot of beauty that's in this game. There's a lot to be appreciated. There's a small thing that I like to point out when it comes to this game, and when you see those lights that are going around on the ship, you can actually jump on them, and it actually shuts them off. <laughs> it's such a small. It's just the small things like that I love about this game. All uh, right, now Skydeck. One of the most technical stages. My goodness, I hate this stage. Yeah, I think everyone does. Uh, one reason I really hate it on Dreamcast is there's just it puts the Dreamcast under so much stress, and it just there are sections where it lags, and ooh boy, do you feel it? <laughs> Funny you say that. On the Dreamcast version, at the start of the stage, for no reason, sometimes the game just crashes. Don't tell me that. Yeah, you know, that's a thing. Right when you end, right when you get get to the first checkpoint, you, the game will just crash. That is so And I'm terrifying. praying that doesn't happen during your run. It happened to my. It happened to a Superfly a, a Gabe when I told like literally five minutes after I told him that. that <laughs> I is, thought that was really funny. That is brutal. And another thing is, on the PC version, you can crash in Act Two for no reason. That's and in the last cool. act, you can soft lock, which is all you though. Yeah, this stage is dumb. Yep, I also love, you know, you just fall down there. It's like, nope, you're not on there. Yeah, the collision after you get off a ladder is always wonky. Also, rip hover. <laughs> Wait, you hover there? No, I'm saying rip because you hovered. <laughs> Wait, how can you... Did I hover? I didn't mean to. That was a hover. You tried to jump, but you missed it, so it was a hover. Whoa, I didn't know that was a thing. Thank you for giving me some knowledge. Okay. Also, in this section, he's going around the perimeter, or he's skipping having to go around the perimeter and just using this, uh, this giant walls little... I don't even know what to refer to it as, actually. <laughs> I guess it's roof. Yeah. To get to the cannon quicker. Also, this section, you kind of just want to be quick in, but you don't want to be too quick, because every time you hit a cannon, you lose all your speed. Yeah. And you ascend. Which we definitely yeah. just got a good example of that there. Yeah. It doesn't even necessarily need to be you that hits the cannons. It can be the um, ancient light particles as well. Very yeah, that's why I try to like just run through rather than having to spin Nash. Also, this section is another one of the small sections in the game that actually is pure RNG. The cannon will either go left or right when you first go in, and you have to and you have to pretty much pray that it's going to go in the direction you're going to if you don't go fast enough to hit him right at the start. Or you can just do this. Yep, yeah, I uh, yeah. I actually didn't know that fact. I thought that if you got there fast enough, it would go to the same one. And I guess I well, the when you go there me. fast enough, it's always going to be the middle one. But if you don't get there fast enough, it's going to randomly go left or right, and you just have to pray it's going to the one that you're gonna have to go to if you miss it. Or you can just hit the cannon before it like turns all the way left or right. This one I am not a huge fan of. This is uh, not my favorite trick in the game. Yeah, this section is awkward on Dreamcast due to how the camera works. What I like to do in this section is hold L and R before when I make that jump. Yep, same. Also, he's tr skipping an entire section with this spin dash jump over here by going immediately to the capsule. But if you miss it, you just get the gravity change immediately as the, as the stage does it. And you can just make it like that anyway. But you can also land immediately on the capsule. But you want to be careful when you do that, because when you do that, remember what I mentioned earlier about the game soft locking? It soft locks on the little tunnel like wall that he, that he went through. If you get stuck under that area, and you have to soft reset the game. You can't just quit the stage or restart. You have to literally soft reset your game. Yeah, wow. stages in this game don't finish until the game considers Sonic to be grounded and colliding 
on the wrong spot can basically get you stuck airborne, essentially. The game thinks Sonic's just falling forever. Also, speaking of little things in this game, we don't see it during the run, but, like, the, the fact that he has, like, Metal Sonic and the Sonic from Sonic Heroes in different capsules is, like, the coolest thing, was the coolest thing, still is really, really cool to me. I, little extras like that, man, they mean the world. They also have the um, Mecha Sonic, or Silver Sonic, from um, Sonic 2 in one of the capsules as well, which is a nice little Easter egg. Yep. I would, uh, I'd also like to mention that if the rumors are true about uh, the 30th anniversary for Sonic, and they, they do truly do a full remake of Sonic Adventure 1, I, I intend to be the best on the planet at that. I don't see it happening, unfortunately. <laughs> They've never done a remaster. They've only done ports. I was going to say, gee, thanks, dude. I can try. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've been a Noble Sonic fan for all my life, and I can't see them ever doing something like a remaster. I they love how Robotnik budget. don't got a neck. Yeah. Poor guy. He just got all just head. <laughs> Nothing but dome. Also, this area is confusing for me. You see him descend like that slowly, as if he has his jet booster, but he doesn't actually have it there, so he kind of just slowly descends. I also like how Sonic gets within, like, an inch of him, and then it cuts to Amy running in front, and Sonic's, like, all the way back again. Oh, yeah. That is going back to this game definitely bugged me. Also, something that really bugs me about the start of the fight. You see where Sonic and Gamma are in, their, in, the, in the area? The fight starts, they swap places. That yep. bugs me so much. <laughs> also, also thing, pretty much uh, oh no bootleg. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, one thing I like to mention during this that section too is that you don't actually want to keep hitting them afterwards. Because despite their health being at zero, you can continue to hit them and lose time. Yeah, it's called a phantom hit and it's pretty dumb. <laughs> What if you ever really want to be in? It's pretty funny. Also, they did a really poor job of this fastest thing alive thing. Yeah, they've kind of that's kind of just been notorious in the series. At this point, anyone is faster than Sonic. You just had Jenny from the block run in front of you, bro. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why am I laughing at that? <laughs> also, I love how uh, Gamma is just committed to the pose here. He's like, nah, I feel stupid. I'm just keeping it. He's like, alright, I'm gonna just chill here. Even though immediately after this cutscene, he's like just perfectly fine. Yep, he just instantly goes back to stand and I was like, alright, cool, we friends. Also, one thing that upsets me about um, the Dreamcast version is that since you can't skip cutscenes, you can enter the ship's interior or the captain's quarters like before this cutscene starts, and you can skip it and it saves a few seconds. But if you were to skip the if you were to enter the captain's quarters as before the cutscene starts on Dreamcast, it just has you sit there for like 20 seconds as if the cutscene is playing even though Sonic is just standing still which is really weird <laughs> also I found a random inconsistency with that light dash where one of the rings will randomly be missing and it just doesn't let you up yeah the thing with light dash on Dreamcast is you go double distance and as a result that means you're going even faster so sometimes he huh. just misses rings okay Also, fun thing, if he was to pause during that ship transformation, which is possible, you just see the ship just deload itself. <laughs> oh. Well, you're going to have to teach me that if this run gets in, because I'd like to show that off. Yeah, you literally just pause the game, <coughs> nothing else. <laughs> Frame perfect? <laughs> no. It, it's literally any time no, in that just, area when the ship memeing. is changing. <laughs> 
You wish it was frame perfect. If I do it, I'm gonna say it's frame perfect. I'm letting that be known right now. I don't like false information of my speed game. Oh. I've, I'm not gonna like lie. Like saying G the game's good, Kappa. I'm not gonna lie, GDQ so. staff. I haven't done it. I will never do it. But you don't know how bad I want to get a game in and just say nothing but wrong information about the run the whole time killing it. <laughs> and we just missed Kaiokun, I mean Froggy. I must say Froggy. Kaiokun is his name in Japanese. Kaiokun. I think that's how you say Froggy in Japanese. Something like that. That is awesome. Kaiokun. Oh, oh, I've been meaning to bring something up about this section that, like, I found, and I don't know if it'll be useful anywhere, and there's only one place that I could think of, potentially. Hmm? Uh, so, I was doing this run over at a homie's house. Uh, Shoutouts to all of the uh, local Colorado speedrunners. Uh, every Friday we, we link up, thanks to my buddy, uh, SSR, and we do a bunch of runs locally, and no timers or anything. Well, we'll have a timer, but like we don't record it generally. We're just old men about it, just doing runs for each other. We've had a lot of PBs, um, some world records that no one will ever see. <laughs> but, it, you know, sometimes it be that way. Uh, one thing that I was doing, uh, I wanted to save time and be cool. So I was actually uh, charging my homing, or not homing attack, but my light speed dash. And then I would uh, uh, homing attack into the enemy pick it up and then go to throw it and when going to throw it you actually don't throw it sonic just like stands in the air and he yeah. basically hovers and That's so kinda weird i haven't looked into it but i have a theory that like you might be able to like either pass like a loading trigger for uh windy valley instead of having to put the key in use the key to like skew your gravity and just go above it um possibly when we have the ice key to maybe clip in and get out of the geometry and get into a red mountain early. Granted, this is all just theory. I'm sure Sam actually knows the answers to these questions, but... I kind of do, yeah. <laughs> I just had it happen, and I haven't tested it out on stream. It, it never hurts to I'm have curious. a different set of eyes look at stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like That'd be really cool if we found some different sequence break to save a little bit of time. Also, we would completely miss talking about Chaos 6. <laughs> So what he had done for Chaos 6 was he was using the Ice Egg to freeze Chaos, and if you hold your Lightspeed Dash out to do a Lightspeed Attack on a Chaos, he actually does double damage. Why, which... why doesn't... Does that work on any of the other bosses, or no? Yeah. No. No. It was a Easter Egg, or I guess secret that they did, because it's also a thing with Knuckles for his um, fighting gloves. Oh, that's cool. Which is basically Knuckles' version of a light speed attack. Also, there's Navi. Yep. Things got rough after the N64 era. <laughs> one thing that bums me out about this game is not one reference to a chili dog. Chili Dogs wasn't really... Well, since this game was more of a Japan popular thing rather than America, the Chili Dog thing is very much Americanized. Yeah, no, for sure it is. That's why the English dub of this game isn't <clears throat> great. So, being... one thing what? that I will mention coming up here that I find really ironic is I used to make a lot of jokes about how easy this section is and like why would you get hit by the fire and now I it's literally been, RNG. I I have not been able to get through there without getting hit by the fire and so learning now that that is RNG that explains everything. Yeah, that that, that part is really dumb. Speaking of really dumb parts, you see I'm moving very slowly because I have lost many a run here to this trick. Yeah, this not... trick is. I call it puzzle skip, and you have to hit three colored lights and use the snake that's swimming across to open up the doors. And on Dreamcast, it's a lot more scary to do this skip because of, once again, not having free camera. It makes things so rather difficult to make skips for in the run. Uh, also, my favorite thing, or my favorite clip from this game actually happened in that previous section before getting on the snake. Uh, I was talking about 
how uh, I, the more I run this game, the more I see and the more I understand why the uh, Sadex runners talk about what they do. And as soon as I said that, I literally fell through the floor for doing nothing. That sounds like Sonic Adventure. I was standing still and I fell through the ground and it killed my run. Actually, I take that back. When it comes to Sonic Adventure, walls don't exist. When it comes to Sonic Adventure 2, ceilings don't exist. When it comes to Sonic Heroes, floors don't exist. A lot of things just don't exist progressively in Sonic games. That's pretty fun, actually. I like that. I get I get a little bit clenched during this section and take it slow because I've just I've had a lot of silly diffs. You also see. Uh, I lose a second or two, like not a whole lot of time here. Like, oh, scrabbing. did you go for yeah the skip? Yeah. Oh, nice. So one one thing that I'm always going for in my runs, I mean, win this with Sonic One is like, if it's faster, if it's not faster, if it looks cool, I'm going for it. There you'll see we hit like a, a bit of an invisible barrier at the end. Um, if I would have waited to do my homing attack, it probably would have been fine. Uh, also, be sure to homing attack cancel. I never knew about that until very recently, and it has definitely saved me individual bits of time. Again, just going back to you always want to practice fundamentals in your runs. Um, please, please, please do not sleep on your fundamentals. I know that OGs such as Draco and Sam can really tell you that if you don't, if you don't have the easy stuff, there's no reason to have the hard stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you want to learn how the game works before you start going into tough things, and you have no idea why things aren't working. Also, we're going to completely skip this entire room by just simply changing one thing of the floor as intended. And then, you know, spin dash up and look, what do you know, it's the end of the puzzle. Yep. Kind of an oversight there. <laughs> yeah, a lot, of the, a lot of the QA testing for Sega was definitely questionable. Then again, you only have a certain amount of time to get so much done through a game. And playing the actual game is only a tenth of what they have to do for testing. We have this cutscene here about how uh, Sonic has explained that he's actually the direct descendant of Seto Kaiba. And he needs to summon the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. You'll see. I don't think, uh, that's, I don't think that's accurate. <laughs> We'll see here that the, there's an ancient transcript of the Blue Eyes White Dragon, uh, one of the rarest Yu-Gi-Oh cards in existence. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Can't even keep going. With this down. Uh, I thought it was the Legend of the Hidden Temple. Legend of the that's a good one too. And then so it's coming up. Uh, we have uh, the Eggman puzzle, which always made me feel like a dum dum as a kid until Sam made fun of me and made me learn how to actually do it. And... Yeah, I, I'm not even gonna say what you do until you actually end up doing it in the run. <laughs> yep, and then, it's uh, just it's just so difficult. Yeah, to call actually has, if I'm not mistaken, some uh, voice lines in the game to, uh, hinting that she may have at one time been playable. Is that correct? Uh. Or did Beta 64 That's not just what made her right? believed to be playable. What made okay. her believed to be playable is that when you use Moonjump codes, she also ascends with you in cutscenes. Same with Eggman. And because all of her mouth movements is mimicked by Amy's. That's and also, really when you look through the character list in the code for the addresses, you see Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, Tikal, Big Gamma, Eggman. In that order. Dude, if Eggman would have been playable... Aww. He's technically playable if you change some addresses around, but all he does is just walk around. Same with the call. That's all she does. She walks around and jumps. And it's not even animation. She's just walking in the air. They Which is expected, just, because the game crashes if you try just doing it without changing any addresses. Okay. That probably explains like like it being so early. They just probably couldn't think of anything for Eggman to do. Yeah, I think it's. I think the only reason that's in the game is because that they move around in cutscenes and they needed a way to do that properly. Because that's all they do in the cutscenes is just walk around whenever they need it. Yeah, 
Anyways, now we're coming up to the final stage, final egg. Final egg. And uh, there's a nice skip in this stage, but before yeah. we do that, we need to get through the hardest puzzle known to me. I swear there is no consistent way to get through this. Yeah, I no, really this, wish we had some kind of way, but my goodness, it is this, just so tough. This trick is frame perfect. Uh, if you don't get it, you can actually hard lock the game. You'll see we actually had a scare of that right at the beginning of the puzzle. And here at the dude, end, I'm dude, just doing a dude, very, you very got specific, it. Oh my God. very specific sequence of jumps to be able to get through that section. It is the hardest part of the room. <laughs> How does he do it? Nah, but in uh, all reality, in my opinion, this is probably the hardest trick in the run. It's the most inconsistent trick in the run, which makes it one of the hardest tricks in the run. Yeah, that's that's a fair way of putting it. Basically, there's a capsule up here that they accidentally left in. It's just floating out there in the distance. Oh my gosh, so you actually got that first try. first try. Yeah, no. I that is, you make that look way easier than it is. Dude, it's... it was a very near miss as well, because Sonic yeah. needs to remain on top of the capsule to actually finish the stage. Again, the stage doesn't finish unless you're grounded, so... Yeah, but the so... thing about that is, the capsule has, like, a little floor halfway when you push it down, but the flooring extends a bit out to the left of the capsule, so you can, you do have some, some free movement to be on the left, but you just don't want to be much to the right, because then you end up falling through the capsule and fall and die. Yep, and, and it means nothing. And yeah, it hurts really bad for when you land on the capsule, but then don't finish the stage. But yeah, that capsule isn't there for DX, unfortunately. <laughs> and then upcoming is the biggest heartbreak of the run. Uh, I was so nervous here that I did die once. It was very early that I died, Oof. but it actually my goal, like right now, outside of trying to get the world record, is uh, just sub one twenty. And I get trolled pretty hard, and I get like a, a 120.03 or 05. You uh, hate to see it. <laughs> yeah, I just, I can do the fast strat, it's just like without, I haven't like set up to go back and fight this boss again. So it's been a little bit since I've practiced it, and like when I get here, it's just, it's so nerve-wracking that it's like, okay, this is the same thing every time, you just, it's on you. This is not the game's fault if you mess up. And then yeah, I usually get in my head a little bit too hard. Also, shout out to Draco Dan for teaching me that this movement right here is key to not have him do extra lasers. Yeah, yep, just outright Oof. miss. Yep. There he goes, yeah. Yep, big nerves. Big nerves. And yeah, it's kind of endemic to um, sad X bosses in general that there's a lot of waiting around until you have an opportunity to attack, but being that there's a lot of like mini phases that this guy goes through, there's quite a bit that you can do to speed things along. The main one being that as long as you don't move around too much like this, it won't generate extra cycles of this attack. Yeah. There's another thing with this uh, attack where if you were to just spin dash jump like and have yourself as, like be just be off the uh, footholds while he's shooting, he doesn't actually shoot anything. <laughs> it's kind of dangerous, but it's pretty funny to see. I didn't know that. Yeah. He's trying to shoot where you're standing, and if you're not standing on the floor, what's he going to shoot at? Also, I'd like to know, you can see, generally, like, if I'm doing a run, I'm going to be like, alright, whatever. You know what? I'm going for the fast run again. Dog, I had no lives. This was a GDQ submission. I was like, nah, we getting through it today, Poppy. And then, to be uh, fair, yeah. game overing in this section. Actually, I think I would watch the cutscene again if you were to, die, if you were to game over. Um, yep on this fight. Oh yep. my goodness. That would be bad. <laughs> yeah, and then that, you saw we got a shot there, and let me tell you, that's probably the deepest breath I have taken in a long time that I did not fall off the stage or clip through the ground. <laughs> also, here comes my favorite part of this fight. <clears throat> what -a, what -a, what -a, what -a, what -a, what -a. Yep. Shout out to JoJo's. Not a JoJo thing. I know it's not, but it's just cool, and it makes me think of JoJo. I get angry. <laughs> I'm sorry. He should have come out saying, Muda, 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 Muda. That's <laughs> but, Does he really say that? He does in the JP version of SA2. What? Okay, that's sick. I need to learn that game now. <laughs> if you're not infatuated with Dio Brando, are you really living? Just saying. <laughs> Alright. That character. But this is a PG stream, so I can't get into my thoughts on that one. 
But then, yeah, Family um, friendly language. I guess there's a little bit of stuff to know. Like, you can actually jump onto these splitting, uh, spinning platforms uh, faster than he throws them out and get a hit on Robotnik. However, it, uh, to my knowledge, is fairly risky to do so. It is risky because the spike on his perimeter can hurt you. Also, if you do it on this last um, hit and you immediately attack him, you will get stuck on Egg Viper's hitbox and you'll likely just die. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Also, he's going to try to do a sneak attack on you, but, you know, let's get out of the way. Yeah, and I ended my timer like three seconds early because I was just nervous and I wanted it to be sub-120 even though I knew it wasn't. <laughs> but that is the run. And uh, for closing, let's have a couple quick shout-outs. Shout-outs to Draco and Lemris for being here for the run. Um, it was cool, you know, doing this audio yeah. commentary. This is the first time I've gone through and re-recorded audio for a run, so it is definitely different. Uh, do either of you guys have any closing words you'd like to get in? Uh, not that I know of. Any anyway, I'm I'm bad with closing words. <laughs> what about you, Draco? You good or what? Yeah, no, just uh, this is you know a super cool run. Hopefully, we get to show this off. It's a nice, different way to show Sonic Adventure. It's yeah, been, it's definitely it's obviously been shown. shown at GDQs before, but not, not this version. Any of the cutscenes still in this. Yeah, it's also just, what? What? Uh, I was gonna say it's just it's just very very different. Uh, it's it's one of the things that I am totally in love with the run. I'll probably keep doing it for the rest of my speedrunning career. Uh, on a closing note, I would like to give you know. Y'all have seen my runs before I give a ton of shout-outs, uh, so... Shout-outs to the Planet Chaos community, shout-outs to the Recky Wreckers, uh... Shout-outs to PMK, Buffalo, Her, Pac-Man crew, y'all know what it is, um... Uh, you know, DSK, Murder Cult, got all the names from back in the day, all the homies, uh... Chicago Fighting Game Community, California Fighting Game Community, uh... EMP, all in New York... Uh, Josh Sanford, all of you goons, all you guys, yeah. I'll do this on stage, too, because you already know how it is. But All right, this has been Sonic Adventure 1. Please, please, Michael Yama, I'll give you five bucks. Please, please.